South African women are responsible for a plethora of social reform movements and have carved out careers in many non-traditional fields. But how do we break through the institutional, cultural and socio-economic barriers that bar women from participating in decision-making? And to help us unpack this, I'm joined by Leanne Emery Hunter from the Youth Employment Service. Leanne, thank you so much and good afternoon to you. Just looking at decision-making in particular, before we unpack the services of your NPO, decision making is quite a big thing, especially when you are a woman and you may not, you may have the imposter syndrome at the economic table or feel that you don't necessarily belong. How important is uh, having access to at least influence some decisions as uh, South African women? You know, it's so important. South African women make up around half the population and actually research has shown that they influence most of our consumer decision making and yet we have 47 percent of youth um, young women excluded from the economy so to not be able to actively participate in the economy and have jobs and be influencing product development innovation technology decision making we are really doing ourselves a disservice getting young women into jobs and then prioritizing their development and growth is massively important and in south africa we have additional barriers that many nations don't necessarily face the same kind of challenges we do Young women in South Africa, often spatial inequality is a major problem for young mothers trying to move between communities and cities to get work. We have gender-based violence. We have so many challenges, and this is why it becomes more important than ever to ensure that we get young women into jobs so that they can make decisions, so that they can influence decisions, and so that we can ensure that our businesses are more profitable, more innovative, and more socially responsible. Yeah, and the level of protection as well as you're saying from a socioeconomic point of view, but also just your safety and security, gender-based violence being a huge problem, and not only in the home, but literally just uh, um, out in the, in the open and uh, open spaces and streets. So in that process, what kind of agency do women have? Yes, we know the 1956 Women's March was particularly about the freedom of association movement and not being restricted, and many more strides have been made, and yet we seem to have that bottleneck where we're not achieving what South Africa is capable of doing with the gender parity. Absolutely. I think in Africa, um, of 581 um, listed companies, over $150 million, we only have 35 um, female CEOs. And, you know, many young women dream of being CEOs, but actually in South Africa, the reality is they can't even they can't get a job they can't get any job and without being ha without having financial power and without being able to contribute to the economy this makes them so vulnerable in every aspect of their lives so for us at the youth employment service what we really focus on is trying to get young South Africans, with about 60% being young women, into their first work opportunity so that they can break that experience trap. I can't get experience without a job and I can't get a job without experience. And they can meaningfully in, um, participate in the economy. They can make decisions. They have agency. They have some level of power. And this is the first step to ensuring that young women are able to take back their agency and their power. Yes. And how then do you galvanize enough uh, support, particularly for policy reform? That exactly where you're saying the goalposts are cont consistently moved. One, you have to have a metric. Once you have it, no, you don't have the adequate experience. Uh, or maybe we need somebody with a postgrad degree, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, as you're saying, that women bear the brunt mostly of that kind of economic discrimination and exclusion. 
Absolutely. So at the Youth Employment Service, we work with businesses and we are the biggest private sector led job creation initiative in South Africa. So we work with about 1,500 um, 1, corporate partners. In four years, we've created 114,000 work opportunities for young South Africans. And how we do this is that we have a partnership with government where we have a special incentive that if businesses join the YES program and they create these life-changing opportunities for young people. They are able to receive one or two levels up on their BEE scorecard. And more and more businesses are simply joining YES because they know that this fits in beautifully with their environmental, social and governance strategy, their sustainability strategy. And if we have two in three young people in South Africa out of the job market and without purchasing power, they understand the economic and social um, imperative to get these young people into jobs. And what we're seeing is that you know, we also have a demand and supply issue where the jobs are be cre being created in the first economy. But as you mentioned, many young South Africans are coming out of our education system not equipped to be able to enter these kinds of roles, which is why at the Youth Employment Service we work with businesses to be innovative in how we get young people into jobs. So we have, for example, a model called our turnkey solution, where our clients sponsor youth jobs in undercapacitated sectors that have a low um, a barrier to entry for young people and young women. So things like um, in community jobs, like healthcare workers, education assistants, um, entry-level di digital jobs, etc., that they get trained on the job in that first year and then they're able to break that um, trap that so many young people find themselves in. And particularly for young mothers, having to travel far and spatial inequality, as I mentioned earlier, is such a barrier. So we work with communities and host partners in communities to ensure that these youth are able to actually work in their communities and make an impact in these communities and not have to travel so far and be able to access those first work opportunities without necessarily having a degree or formal um, you know, level of formal diploma, etc. With simply a metric or even lower, you can enter the job market, get the experience, get the network, skills, training, etc. that immediately makes you three to seven times more employable. Yeah, and just as we uh, say goodbye to you, those that have simply given up, you know, the youth apathy that says, I've tried and my circumstances are just so dire, that uh, I've lost all hope um, and abandoned my dreams, etc. What What message do you say that, you know, to keep hope alive and um, and still dream? You know, it's it really is when you have 7 million unemployed youth in our country, we do see the despair and hopelessness and this difficulty in breaking this trap. But there are initiatives like YES that work with the private sector to try and really reverse this trend. And we see that within you know such a short space of time if given an opportunity these young people are able to transform form not only their own lives but the lives of their families and their communities with about 61 percent of our youth coming from grant recipient households and i think for me you know what what we have seen is even if you are not in formal employment if you are showing an attitude and a willingness to work and to really make a difference. You are noticed and you can so quickly rise through the, tra the, the ranks. We have young women who are the first female forklift drivers in their organizations. They're going on to become barristers, managers, coders, um, financial analysts, that the potential is endless, but just even if you volunteer, there's so much digital training at the moment, try and get some kind of work under your belt so that you are de-risked for future employers and don't give up hope. Um, we really see the huge potential that young South Africans and young women have if only given a chance. All right, Leanne, really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for the inspiration as well. That's Leanne Emery Hunter from the Youth Employment Service. And that is, yes, a numerical 
like for youth dot co dot yes for youth dot 